Welcome to DMV Spotlight here in the nation's capital where we shine a light on the issues impacting D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. I'm Barbara Britt. Well, during the holiday season, we see a lot of decorations inside and outside the home, and it's certainly fun and festive, but it can also increase your fire risk. And my guest this morning is the acting fire chief in Prince William County for the County Fire and Rescue Department, Chief James Forgo. Chief, thank you so much uh, for taking time to speak with us today on DMV Spotlight. Thank you, Barbara, for having me. Well, Chief, I'm sure you've seen, as we know, um, not just Prince William County, but at this time of year, there just seem to be so many, uh, particularly home fires. And it's it's very, very troubling. Obviously, uh, you know, people are, are excited. They're together. They're cooking. They're um, having fun with their guests. They have a lot of extra decorations. But talk to us about some of the increased risk um, that we face when it at this particular time of year. Yeah, Barbara, thank you for that. You know, um, usually this time of year also means it's cold weather out there, and a lot of the folks are inside the house, and when they gather, they have special guests over. And, and um, so they take the time to decorate the house, and, and uh, some of the things that they really need to worry about or think about is, is making sure they don't overload their circuits with their Christmas decorations, um, making sure that... Um, you know, that they never leave. Can A lot of people use candles, and you never want to leave those unattended. Um, you never want to, you know, use them near combustibles like curtains or uh, uh, presents, cardboard boxes, a real Christmas tree, um, and never use anywhere where children or pets can be around. And I know, Chief, just even in the last couple of weeks, there was a fire in Prince William County and a home a woman was injured um, with a live flame candle, and it had, um, I guess, started uh, the fire with because of her clothing. I don't know if she had a bathrobe or just something. You know, we like to dress fancy sometimes at the holidays, uh, but that's really what started the fire. This is terrifying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, um, unfortunately, you know, getting too close to, to the uh, flame and then catching uh, your clothes on fire, you know, and we we got to remember going back to when we were kids, you know, to make sure we learn the basic rules and teach our kids, you know, stop, drop, and roll. That would have really helped a lot on uh, uh, the injury. So, um, yeah, candles are really bad um, um, when they're unattended. Also, another big one uh, is folks bringing in uh, live Christmas trees. You know, the earlier they get them, um, you want to make sure that you keep them hydrated, that you're always putting water um, in the stand to keep them going because they will dry out. And once they do, um, they can they can go up in, in moments, um, in a few seconds. Um, you want to make sure you keep those away from fireplaces and space heaters. That's another big thing people use. You want at least three feet away from those. Um, and then as soon as Christmas is over, you know, take them out, recycle them. Um, you, you know, you just don't want that in your house. And then make sure your electrical lights are in good shape and um, um, have have some type of uh, company that that uh, ensures that they're they're safe to use. And you know, you make a good point, Chief, because we do have a lot of extra. A lot of folks have a lot of holiday lights that they put up in their home or outside their home. Do those lights lead to to fires? Is that is that a concern? Um, it, it's always a concern because you want to make sure that, uh, one, that they're waterproof and that, uh, you know, this time of year we can, eat, you know, rain or, or snow, um, and that we're not overloading the circuits. You know, sometimes we'll put too much thinking, oh, they're LED lights, they don't draw too much. Well, they very well could be. So you, it's something that you really got to, to think through instead of just just going ahead and plugging stuff in. And talk to me about some of the extra dangers that we have in the kitchen. Obviously, nowadays, everybody gathers in the kitchen. It's so much fun. Uh, people, especially for, you know, this this holiday time with so many various holidays. And food is always a big part of it, as we know. Um, but, but tell us about the increased risk that we face. Certainly. You know, that's one of our number one fires in, in the fire service across the nation is kitchen fires. Um, you never want to leave uh, 
uh, cooking unattended. A lot of times we'll, you know, we're all from busy families and, and we'll start something and we'll, we'll walk away and forget about it and come back. You want to make sure you keep away from small children and pets that can then either get up or, or accidentally hit the stove and, and uh, knock something over. Um, you want to keep combustibles away. A lot of times we'll put a box or we'll put um, um, a pot holder or um, a glove next to, to the stove that can catch on fire. Um, never wear loose clothing while you're cooking because, uh, you know, you can reach across, uh, especially on a gas stove where it can catch on fire. And a lot of times um, we usually eat, eat the traditional meals, and that's turkey usually, and, and uh, we do a lot of frying of turkey. So you want to make sure that you do that outside, away from the house. Um, never cook a frozen turkey um, and never leave unattended. And, and Chief, we also always see, I'm speaking today with Acting Fire Chief James Forgo with the Prince William County Fire and Rescue Department talking about the increased risk at this holiday time of fires in the home and in other areas. Chief, we see this every year in the news department, somebody frying their turkey on their wooden back deck. Tell us how that goes. Well, that happens a lot. You know, some people will say, I'm not going to make a mess. I can deal with it. They're worried about the weather, so they want to stay enclosed. But listen, it doesn't take much for, for that flame to heat up that hot oil. Um, you want to make sure that it's in an area where nobody's going to be around it and, and accidentally knock it over. Um, and the number one thing is, is people think that they're, uh, when they get a turkey that it's uh, fully thawed. Uh, not frozen, and it, it, it still is frozen. It, it contains fluid, and when they dump it in that hot grease, it'll bubble up and boil over and catch the deck. Um, anything that's combustible, it'll catch it on fire. And the, the I cannot imagine the burns and things like that that happen in that situation. Just so, so tragic. Chief, I do want to talk. You mentioned a couple of times about our kids, our pets. Of course, so many... Um, so many times it's so much fun to have the kids run through the house. But, but again, the concern that we have with, with our animals, with our children, uh, running through the house, the kitchen, the candles, the decorations, uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, you know, kids, uh, they're, you know, just like when I was a kid, you know, we like to uh, explore, check out things, you know, sometimes even get into the presence a little early. Um, but... Um, you want to make sure that, that there's nothing out there that uh, a pet can chew on a, a, a decoration um, cord or, or can swallow, a kid can swallow something, a bulb or a small ornament off the tree, um, can pull uh, a pet or a child can pull that tree down and maybe either get into uh, an open flame or, or uh, um, on top of somebody. So, um, you always need to, you know, ask the kids to be mindful and, and watch where they're playing. And I understand that, of course, over the years, you know, the building materials themselves have changed um, and they're far more combustible um, than they used to be. And you don't have as much time in the event of a fire to get out of your home. Yeah, you're right. That, that's a big part. But, um, you know, one of the, the, the best tools that we have that, that – um, um, is out there is smoke detectors. You know, you need to make sure that you have the proper amount and that they're they're always working. Uh, make sure that you got fresh batteries in it. You usually put it in twice a year, you know, when we change our clocks uh, to make sure they're working, keep them clean. And that's so that's so important. And um, I know for for uh, a lot of the prevention um aspects is that families, um, people living in a, in a home need to have a plan, a way to get out of the home. Yep, everybody needs to have some type of safety plan for their home, especially when you have guests that are not familiar with your home, as, as you might be, and let them know where the exits and, and where to go and that everybody um, designates a meeting place that you know that everybody's out of the house. You know, when we come to those those 911 calls and the house is on fire, that's our main concern is if anybody's in the building. And so if somebody can meet that fire truck on the outside and let them know, listen, everybody's out of the house, we're all here at my meeting place, that changes the dynamics for us when we fight a fire. 
It's so important, and I know um, just the, over the years reading just even things like keeping your bedroom door closed, touching that door, touching the door handle before you open it, and there's, you just don't have a lot of time to get out of your house if there is, in fact, a fire. That, that is so correct, and, and even when we have special guests and people over, usually they're bringing presents, bringing suitcases, a lot of other stuff, so you need to be mindful of storage and, and uh, where do you put that and make sure that you know, you're not blocking escape routes like windows or outside doors. And you mentioned the space heaters earlier and other heat sources because it is chilly and, and at least until recently a lot of our fuel has been expensive. People have been supplementing. Are there, are there heater units that, that you all as the fire department in Prince William County say these are fairly safe or do you tell people not to use them? What's your recommendation? Well, you know, you, you do need to keep yourself warm in cold weather. Um, you know, um, all we're asking is that you use the, a proper uh, space heater that has been approved uh, by uh, UL um, or other uh, uh, grading agencies. Um, but there's there's a lot of other things people use, uh, kerosene heaters. So there's, that comes with a lot of different hazards. Um, and, and, uh, and sometimes, just like we had a big outage um, the other day up in Montgomery County, um, power will go out and people will use generators. So you need to make sure that you keep them outside, well ventilated and away from um, a living area. Um, as with the smoke detectors, there's also CO detectors that are on the market. So you really need to be mindful of if you're using any kind of combustible products um, in the house or, um, and flammables that you have uh, a CO detector um, to, to monitor. So, Chief, just in our last moment or so, if you just could tell folks really what your biggest concern for them is in terms of staying fire safe and fire aware during this holiday season, what would you what would you say to folks? I would say, you know, enjoy the holiday seasons, but um, be mindful of, of decorations, live trees, uh, anything that that produces heat, and to make sure. And not just for the holidays, but all year round, that you have a working smoke detector and, if possible, a carbon monoxide detector. All right. Well, Chief, I just so thank you for your time. I've been speaking today with Acting Fire Chief James Forgo with the Prince William County Fire and Rescue Department. And I just want to thank you so much for joining me today on DMV Spotlight. I'm Barbara Britt. Join us again next week at this same time for DMV Spotlight.